You know, I start a review on something and I'm just like, can I just talk about the tigers again? Because I haven't pulled these off the wall in forever. Because it's like they're they're kind of hard to get. Actually, you can't get them on Amazon. They have to come in either a bundle or you got to order them from Germany. And it's just like one of the best bears that bear makes. Um, anyway, we're plugged into the BTR seven, which is not to be confused with the BTR five or the BTR three, which are both being picked up because they were in the yard sale. And I'm like, I'm done with the threes. I have the five and I have the seven. It's too many generations. But you could just assume that's how big the three was. This is the Q Deluxe Q5. And here is the IFI Go Blue. And for comparison's sake, here's the IFI Griffin. So size-wise, the BTR7, and this is in a case, so I'll pull this out. And also it's got an adapter on it. It's got a DD Hi-Fi adapter. See, let's link this, which gives you, you could actually have a 2.5 one to balance, but it's a, it's a balanced 4.4 adapter. The new BTR7 has 4.4. We don't have to get adapters anymore. It's fucking, thank God. Um, but let me get out of this case. So yeah, what, let me see. I think the entire case from the BTR5 will basically fit in the case for the BTR7. So the BTR7 is a, is a is a thick one. It's thicker than than its predecessors. It's thicker than a lot of its competition. Um, I haven't gotten that. What's the uh, the the fancy one that everyone's like? You gotta get this Bluetooth one. Uh, it is literally a miniature like M11 as far as the shape and design go. Let's go shape and design. Remember when we used to do structured videos where we talked about the build and everything? Let's try that again. Timestamps. So glass back, high-res stickers, FIO, MQA when you plug it in via USB, THX amplification. Think that's new. Think that's new. Um, EA say whatever. So glass back, nothing on this side, USB-C charge on this side. 4.4 uh, balanced Pentacon on top, 3.5 unbalanced output, and then you have a microphone, the power button, which I'm going to go over the list of all the things these buttons do, because there's like a lot. Power button, the, I would say menu button, but it's sort of like the command button. Then you have the volume rocker of up and down, and then you have a switch, which turns off the ability to charge it, and that's good for two ways. If you're going to wire this to your phone, like you're just going to get here the wires it comes with, real short. Uh, USB-C to uh, full-size USB-A and USB-C to USB-C jumper, which is actually much nicer quality than that, which is what you want because if you're going to be dongle dingle dangling this around, wow, I just realized that there's little arrows that show an arrow down and this is an arrow up. So you don't want to get data out and into a device because you because uh, OTG cables are fucking finicky about direction. If you wanted to use this as a dongle DAC, and not have it drain the battery on your phone to keep it going, you would flip this switch where charge is currently on, which means if you plug it in, it charges, and you turn it off, and then it just uses the battery and doesn't suck anything from the phone itself. That's fantastic. Except when you're about to go on a trip, like I was, and I have had this for a while, and I accidentally had that off, because it's in the case and there's like a window, but I didn't notice it, so I plug it in, and I walk away, and seven hours later, I pick it up, and it's like, zero. What do you mean, zero? Oh, you didn't charge because the switch wasn't... Mm, so be careful with the switch. So we put that back on. I would honestly... I'm probably never going to wire this to a phone. The whole point of a BTR7, if you don't know what this is, it's a portable Bluetooth DAC amp. And there is a history of... Of portable Bluetooth DAC amps on this channel that go all the way back to before MPOW was banned from Amazon. Uh, we'll talk about the case and why that's a little bit lackluster in that. But all right, wires, wires are great. Bluetooth is great. It connects. It's LDAC. It's got all the fucking features, bells and whistles. I got flack on my phone. We've got, we went over the entire design of it. If you leave it out of the case, it's nice, but it's sharp. It's built like some sort of modern-esque. This whole thing is glass. There's a screen here that you can see, which I wish, at that point, the screen is so nice. I want to put a wallpaper on it. Put her on it. To figure out a way to do that in the FIO control app. So if you decide, like if you decided to take the BTR5 out of its case, or you actually didn't even come with a case, it had a clip because it had no clip in the back. You had to actually clip it onto a big, ugly plastic thing. But DD Hi-Fi, you know, sells cases like this. In fact, this is a DD Hi-Fi case, and you slide it in. But if you didn't want to use it in a case, it's a nice, smooth glass face. face. It's nice. It's like a used bar of soap. In my portable devices that are going in my pants, anything in my pants should feel like a used bar of soap. 
There shouldn't be any rough edges. It's just be like, ooh, smooth. Put it in there. <laughs> this isn't a, nar isn't a new bar of soap. This is a machined metal piece that's got like edges. Like you're gonna have to keep it in this or just hope you wear down metal and glass. Because it's not like, doesn't it's not painful to hold. It's just that it's, it's, you know when you put like keys in your pocket and one of them goes like this and goes right into your leg? I've had that happen when it's out in the case. Just it just got in the pants a little crooked. So you're probably gonna wanna use the leather case. The leather case is, okay. It fits beautifully here. You can slide it right in, boop. Nice and easy, it comes out with a, with a, with a shake. You could start it and pull it out. So it was made by Fio Design for them. The back has the Fio logo uh, stamped into it. It's got this nice stitching on the back. You've got all the controls you need, your microphone hole, you got your power and the menu button. You can kind of tell the part from touching, but not really. They could have done a little better job on delineating that. The positive and negative, which are volume and track change. And then you have the opening for the switch. And then the front comes up. And it's like Fio forgot to design anything on it. And I mean, minimalism aside, I like minimalism, but this is like, like this is not, you got the stitching, you got the logo. Nothing, not a heart or a fucking feel low, like anything here. It just looks, that that looks like a door on a spaceship and it's not even a nice door. So this, this looks good. Like from this angle, it looks great. From this angle, it's like, what the fuck is that black square device you have? So that's my only real negative about the case. It's leatherette, it's not leather, which is fine also. It's it's a nice texture. Um, I have had it where this is this is smooth enough that it slides a little bit on its own, just a little bit, like that much in your pocket. Or if you have your headphones plugged in, which we're gonna go from the Tigers, which got way too much praise, to a 4.4 balanced adapted version of the T60 Yarguns, which I haven't tested yet because we'll talk about power in a second also. But if you have a headphone plugged in here and this is in your pocket and then it goes like that, if it goes up just enough and you start feeling for things, all of a sudden down is up and up is, is menu and it's like, mm. so I don't know, things could be probably improved in that. I don't care, you got a free case, enjoy it. Um, that's about it for physicality. It plugs in, it charges, it's relatively fast once you have that switch on. And you, I have been now, I've been using it for probably four weeks. I got this real advanced, so advanced that they told me, because I got it direct from Fio. They're like, look, it's gonna be broken as shit because we haven't finished the firmware. And I'm like, cool, how bad could it be? So real quick, um, it could be very bad. <laughs> the sound wasn't off, I think the sound was, was constant, but the controls, like the control scheme is, Look at the four buttons out. So you have microphone power. All right. So the power button here is supposed to turn the power on and off. It also activates the menu. It also exits the menu. It also returns to the previous menu step by step. And then the second button is to reconnect, play, pause, answer, hang up, call, cancel a call, force a pairing, activate voice assistant, and confirm menu. These buttons do a lot of shit. Like if you want to activate the assistant, you double press that button. Um, what time is it in Singapore? 1 a.m. It set it over there, but this is on low game. We gotta fix that. And then the here's the here was the big issue with the firmware, because I'm like I use it. It was it was fine, but the it's volume up and volume down. You press the it go away. I need to go back to my music music. Use Telegram to play music. So the volume up and down, or I press. You press it. There's a little there's an indicator here. You can see this little like brown bar, this white bar fills up with brown that indicates volume. 60 presses, by the way, which, so the way the operation is supposed to be, and it is right now, is you press the button over and over and over again to change the volume. And then if you hold it for two seconds, I get to play it. And then if I play it, and then I hold the volume for two seconds, it changes tracks. What was happening in the pre-firmware, pre the firmware I got, was you could press it once, you could press it twice. Maybe the third press, it would still do volume, and then the fourth press, it would change tracks. It was like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Next track, up, down, volume, volume. I couldn't, so it was hilarious using this thing for three weeks where the volume control would also randomly change tracks. But they fixed that. That was obviously the pre-firmware, and I thought it was hilarious that I'm trying to assess this device, and I'm just gonna crush it in my bare hands. 
but uh, like four days ago, they released the actual firmware. This is actually not for sale yet. I, I was looking for it because I'm like, it's got to be out by now. Amazon literally is still pimping the BTR5. The pre-orders on Hi-Fi Go are sold out because it's not ready yet. And then I'm like, oh, Linsoul's got it. Add to cart. This is a product pre-order uh, placed on the processing about one month in stock, likely arrive the end of August. So I'm not going to hold on to this unit till the end of August before I give it the review. I just hope you'll all come back here and click the links before the end of August to buy this unit. Um, but you will be buying this unit because it sounds fucking phenomenal. Because that was the BTR5's thing. The BTR5 was the best thing Theo made, period. They had a bunch of desktop units up until up until the Theo K9. Theo was kind of like, yeah, that's that company that makes all that cool stuff. But the best thing they have is this little Bluetooth thing that's like $130. It should be about 200 bucks by the way it comes out. But this was the this was magically the best thing they made. Like it just sounded better. Everything it plugged into it sounded better than a lot of like the THX amps and desktop things that I had back in what year was this? 2018. So Fio was just this unit. It was, what was Fio? Fio was a couple portables, a couple little miniature desktop amps, E10Ks and stuff, and then this, and only fucking this, right up until the Fio K9, and then the K9 ESS, which I currently have powering speakers in the other side of the room. So. Then the like the M11 and the M11 Plus, and the M11 Plus Limited, and the M11 Plus Limited Waifu Edition, and then the M17. So I started building up, like, they started making THX sound good. Because THX, here are the uh, AAA ones, which I pulled out for my IEM review, by the way. Z12 is currently on sale, I think, still, unless we've run out of 500 pieces. But the uh, Sure, Let's Sure Z12 is on sale. I pulled those out, and I'm like, this is old school THX. The 789s and the AAA ones are old school THX, linear as fuck, boring, but that's fine. Linear as fuck for assessing things is fine. Um, that's what THX used to sound like. And then once the M11 started getting a hold of it and the M15 and then now the M17 and whatever they're doing in the, in the big K9s, they have found a way to take the cleanliness of THX and just make it nice to listen to. I just want it to be nice. I just want it to be nice. And this is very nice. This was very nice. So now, the question I had in mind was, will I love everything I plug into the BTR7 as much as I loved everything I plugged into the BTR5? So far, the answer is yes. Magic 8-Ball, all signs point to fucking yes. So now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna test power because I used it for three weeks, but I did, it was semi-broken, so I didn't like go nuts. So the last few days, I've been going nuts. and. I picked out a couple headphones for this review. Um, I gotta put these on for a split second. These are the uh, Dunu Zen. Actually, before I switch this, nah, yeah, okay, fine. These are the Dunu Zen Pros, which are my stethoscope to the audio world, and the easiest to drive IEMs that I currently have, and therefore anything that has a noise floor, like when you are playing music that's got silence in it, or if you just pause music and the amplifiers are still cooking, if you can hear, eh, that means that there's a noise floor. So currently, all right, this is on low gain. And here's the problem, here's the biggest problem, is the annoying of having to hit this button nearly 60 times to max anything out. I'm not gonna hear anything. I'd also die if I unpaused it right now. So I'm just gonna go back, if you could hold it, then that volume knob, gonna, or if it had, you know, something like a knob. That's why I like the IFI Go Blue, because look, it's got a fucking knob, and it's a nice knob with a button, and it's a, the control surfaces on this are still superior to just any rocker ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dead Girl Superstar by Rob Zombie is happening. They're fucking dead silent. There's 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 not gonna be a noise floor on a THX product from Fio. If there is, my ears aren't good enough to hear it. So I'm gonna leave it out of the case for the rest of this review. Let's now go into the menu real quick. So the operation is you hit the power button. 
but you hold it. Like if you just hit the power button, nothing happens. The button, well, it turns on and off the screen. The button below it is the play pause. So that'll play or pause. So you, if you hit the top one, it just turns off the screen. You have to hold it, but not long enough to turn it off. And that's like a weird game of chicken. It's like, all right, hit this button that'll, if you hold this button for five seconds, this building will explode and you'll die. If you hold it for three seconds, it opens up the refrigerator and you can get a drink. I don't want that button, the same button. I want two different buttons to do that action. I don't know why they didn't make the menu button the button to make or the other button to make the button that opens the thing, not the shut off button. Because if it shuts off, you disconnect. You got to repair. If you got to turn it back on, so it's just a, oh, you got to turn the screen. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, there. Wait. I've held it. I'm holding it. Holding it. Holding it. And 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 now it's off. That's a pretty big gap. All right, I got to give it to him. It's it's not. It's at least another three seconds solidly before it turns off and I just turned it off and means it disconnected from my fucking phone. Turn it on, here's the feel logo, Bluetooth pairing. It's very fast for turning on, it's super quick to pair. Like once I paired it to the Sony phone, it's just like, I'm on there. If I turn it on on the other side of the house, it's on my phone. In fact, I was gonna start this video and I realized there was no, no SD card in my camera. So I was obviously playing this, so I gotta get the SD card out of the other side of the basement. So I took the headphones, took this, left the phone right here, walked, because my basement is 53 by 52, and I walked diagonally across that, so it's like 60 something feet through all that shit. And then it was, it didn't even blip. So I kept walking until I was in the corner of the basement, and then I like, dropped this thing on the wire down behind something, and then it finally stopped working. So if you need Bluetooth range, and that has more to do with this than the phone, because I've had things like X-Duo stuff, where if this phone is in my right pocket and this and the Uden is in my left pocket, it's like, I don't know where you went. I can't see. So it's like, this has good Bluetooth range, if that is one of the things you're looking for. So we are hooked back up. It already went back. If I hit play, she plays. Let's plug in this. Let's go back to the menu. We're going to hold for one, two seconds. Okay. The options are gain, filters, EQ, car mode, U audio, Dimmer, language, screen timeout, input priority, and factory reset, and version. So gain is what we're gonna change. We hit the second button, it's B button, actually. I'm gonna switch it to high. I think we hit menu to go back. Yeah, yeah, we hit one, which is the power button to go back. And then filters are, you know what filters are. There's fast and hybrid fast, and only those two. I, I'm gonna go with hybrid fast now, let's try that. Um, EQ, which we're gonna get to the app. It's gonna be a slightly longer review than I like to make. EQ has off jazz, pop rock, dance, hip hop, classical, R&B, user, and that's it. So user is defined here on the app, not here. You have to define it here on the app, not here, and then you could do things. Unless you can do it here. Let me see if I go to, maybe they've updated that with the firmware. User. I set it to user. Literally, there's no options once you set it to user. So I'm going to take it off the fuck off user. Okay, car mode, which uh, basically means if you leave this in your car, like it's plugged into your aux port, if you plug it into power, when power is live, like when you start your car and you've got it plugged into the cigarette lighter, power is live, this unit turns on. Power disappears, this unit turns off. And you just leave it in your car all the time. They're big, like $1,900 portable, like daps do that. And I'm like, what? life situation are you in where you need a $1,900 DAP with car mode so that you could listen to your fucking insanely high-end player with road noise. Like, I don't get it. Perfectly fine for this because, I mean, for 200 bucks you get a really good connection. You get it balanced out, run into all your amps and do whatever. But, like, those things is, like, less. Less less needed. It stays in the menu, by the way, when the screen turns off, which is a nice feature. Um, U-Audio changes between USB 1.0 or 2.0, which 1.0 doesn't need drivers, but doesn't support MQA. And 2.0 does need drivers. And then you can listen to MQ fucking A and you know, don't do it. Um, dimmer is just the screen dimmer, which is kind of hard to like, you have to like dig into it. There's five levels and honestly, five, four and three are so close. I wouldn't care. Then two actually steps down and one is dim ish. I'm on two. I don't know if you guys can see what, what two looks like. Uh, language, English, or other. Screen timeout, which for this video is at maximum 30 seconds. So you touch it, there's no way to never have it turn off and there's no way to go longer than 30 or less than five. But you got a couple options in between there. You got input priority. Now, 
this is just between Bluetooth and USB. If you're using this as a USB dock, if you have a laptop, if you're traveling and you want a portable, like, excellent, I'm gonna get to the sound eventually, but it's an excellent sounding unit for a little USB-C jumper wire, and then boom, your laptop now sounds like you've got a stack somewhere. Um, and you gotta set the priority to when you plug in USB, USB takes over, or you could still have the priority be Bluetooth. So even though you're plugged in USB to a computer, if Bluetooth tries to connect, it will do that, which is how I have it set because I'm a Bluetooth homo. Homo. Homophobian? Homophobian. Is that a word? Wow, I think I just made something up. Factory reset and then version. And factory reset, you know what that is. And then version tells me this is version 161 which is the version I updated to. We've got indicators in the top. Let me get out of this. Hold for a few seconds. Okay, there we go. 25 is the volume, even though we have a display here also. Out of 60, we've got, what is that telling me? Tell me something's plugged in. Yeah, there's actually an indicator that shows if something's plugged in. Let me change to, wow. Someone, if you can clip on YouTube, that would have been the clip. Okay, so when you plug in the three and a half millimeter, a little picture of a headphone shows up. When you plug in a 4.4 Pentacon, the screen shuts off, but then a circle in a circle shows up. Then it's got the little indicator for high, low gain. I fucking hate this. And this is a feel thing, I think. Like, usually it's just H or L, right? Or an arrow up and an arrow down. There's only two gain settings, but for some fucking reason, feel is decided we're gonna make it like a little prop like this with an arrow pointing up. Very small arrow head that's, on, that's up. That's high gain. So what would low gain be? You would think it would be this reversed and then an arrow pointing down. Nay, nay, the fucking low gain indicator, and I'm gonna, I'm just to be absolutely sure I'm not shitting on them without reason. I'm going to double check it here. I'm saying to gain, go in here, go back to low gain. Yep, nope, it's still fucked. They have the same mountain. Instead of the arrowhead being at the top, now the arrowhead's at the bottom. But the actual shape of the thing hasn't changed. You have to look for this fucking minuscule arrowhead to tell me if it's on high or low gain. What the fuck is that? Who designed that? Fire them. They don't need to have a job. That's terrible. Um, Qualcomm AptX Adaptive is what it's currently using. We're, we're sending it 44K, 24-bit HR, which is whatever the hell's on my phone in FLAC. I, I know for a fact, because XDO has like a desktop unit, I know for a fact they can read the tag data from playing songs. I know they can. In fact, I think that unit even had timestamps. I would love if this had that. Because there's nothing else for the screen to do but shut the fuck off. Shut off. Um, we have to get to sound. In fact, now that we've got these on, which I haven't tested with. Oh, they are playing. It's just quiet. So, like all FIO portables, your volume on your phone is a separate entity from the volume on the unit. And that's to give you better control. Because a lot of times phones have like 10 settings of volume. And it goes from not audible, not audible, not audible. Oh, I hear it. Okay. Oh, God, it's too loud. And it, uh, uh. So you get like three chunks. So having them separate is fine. That means you could adjust. You could put this to 100. And then you could ride that out. Or if you're like in the, like the zone isn't there, you could lower this down two notches. And then you're like, okay. Issue is now this has got 60 motherfucking steps of volume. Which is... It's either more important that it exists or less important because if I need to just drop the volume quickly, I'm going to reach for my phone because I want to take a chunk off of it. Having to lower the volume, if like someone wants to talk to you and you don't want to quite pause the music and just like, hold on, let me just lower this. Hold on. Let me just, I'm lowering it. I'm lowering it. I'm lowering it. I'm lowering it. Okay, now it's low. It's like, shh, come on. Give me 30 steps of volume and then I can adjust with the phone. That's the way it always was. I'm still going up. I'm at 50 out of 60 on T60 Argons. And um, let me give this one or two more songs. Hold on. I'm trying to tell if the bass is there. God, that's clear. Okay, so now is as good a time as any.
to talk about sound quality because like I was talking earlier, THX has come a long way thanks to Fio diddling with it. And this is T60 Argon's on the go level of good. Do, 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 the imaging, the separation, the way it's handling low end. I think it would still be better with like multiple watts. In fact, I don't even know if I know the actual output wattage. Battery capacity. Balanced. It's got a third of a watt. A third of a watt balanced. That is an acceptable amount of wattage. When you get to like the half watt stuff, it's like, okay, I know you're doing that, but you're cheating. Um, what was it? The little, the Calabri. The Ehrman Calabri has like half a watt. And it's like, oh, that's cooking things. And you have to plug that in, but it's basically the same size as this. If the Calabri had Bluetooth, it'd be game over, folks. But now the BTR7 with the THX is now running these. And a third of a watt is enough to get them to run to acceptable levels. I still think you need 8 watts a channel. Just saying. Just saying you need 8 watts a channel. Let's go off Rob Dugan. His recording quality is not great. Now that's... Hold, hold on. I want you all to hear this. Taking it up to 55 out of 60 on high gain. That is some waiting at the bus stop with Argon's music right there. What is this? Turnadat Nesundorma from Jose Carreras. Yeah, this is an audiophile experience. That's all I want out of something that's going to be like the next greatest thing. It's got to be the next thing, the next thing. I'm lowering the volume by. It's got to be an audiophile experience. I got to put it on and go like, okay, this is the best thing that exists over the other previous generation. Here's the previous generation. Does this sound as good as a BTR5? Yes. Does it have more power? Yes. Does it have better connectivity? Yes. That's good. That's the that's what you want. That is the only requirements. If you're going to make a new thing, the only thing they made worse was the size is bigger, but power so understandable. The finish is a little bit too They're just like like what car company like makes every car look exactly the same and it's like why would you do that? Like BMW kind of has to, but they all look stupid now because they have the big grills. But you don't have to make this unit look like the fucking M17 just because it's a thing that has to do with music and it's a Fio. You don't have to have the exact same. The, the design department just shrunk an M11 and changed the, the dimensions. And while it looks cool, I would have gone with something different. I would have gone with a completely different design. You're putting this in your pocket, possibly raw dog, raw dog. Let's go to the app real quick. Yeah, I know what time it is in Singapore now. Thanks. All right, so status. So here we go. BTR. This is the uh, My Devices app or the My Fio app or what does it say it is? Fio Control app. Thank you. BTR7 is disconnected. We are currently connecting. BTR7 Aptex Adaptive 100% battery. Wire function is on. You can disable the function if you plug it into a wire so that if you plug it into a, like a laptop just to charge it, it will charge, but it won't try to connect. And that is accessible only through the Bluetooth setup through this. You've got the idle power of time. So if you stop playing music and it's just sitting there, it's currently set to three minutes. I'm gonna set to like eight minutes because I put things down a lot. You can select the Bluetooth codec, or at least you can limit the ones it can use. Um, there is no SBC on here, which is nice. And the changing will only affect after it shuts down. Like I could shut off all the aptexes and just have LDAC. I could just do this and hit confirm, and then it's doing a thing. It disconnected, it's pairing again. It should connect to just LDAC. LDAC is now connected. And now it says BTR7 LDAC. So now Bluetooth codecs are all off. I just, I want DAC shit. That's probably why it worked across the basement. In fact, we can go take a little test. Hold on. We'll go to this, then we'll run across the basement. Um, you can choose the operation mode. Hold the volume buttons to switch tracks or double click the volume buttons to switch tracks. Dangerous because pushing the buttons is what makes the volume change. So I actually haven't... Oh God, how bad is this going to be? Hold on, I have to go back to this. I have to go back to this. Play. So now... That's still doing volume. If I hold it, what happens? Oh! Oh! 
So now I can hold it to change the volume. Okay, good. This is all new to me. Oh, I might like that better. Because this way we could swing through the volume change, 36, 34, 33. And then if you want to change, it's a quick double press. Is that next? Yeah, okay. So volume up and down, volume down, double press now is next track. Well, I just opened up a whole new can of worms now that I've added that feature. Okay, cool. And the gang. So now that's this page. We go to the settings. Custom device name, I think I've renamed it. I may rename it to ZBTR7, so it doesn't say FIO. Confirm. Uh, firmware upgrade, which is how you do it. You can either do it online. Currently, there's no online upgrades. It's not supported yet. How to do a local one. Clear the pairing history. Shut down the device, which is nice, because if you just, like, I don't know, if someone else is using it and they're pieces of shit, just shut down the device. Uh, now that that's all the settings are, we have EQ, audio, and guide. Guide is obviously... Perfectly blank. Oh, no, there it is. They've added this, thank God. It's basically the manual, which is just this book, which is very, very simple, but on your phone. Yes. Uh, EQ, here is where, you, this is not currently on, but there's your settings for EQ. And there's custom, R&B, rock, classic, jazz, and you can see them. I don't know if you could change each one of them. If I turn it on, can I change jazz? No, see, as soon as you go to touch it, it was custom. So you only get the one custom. I've known a couple of devices that you could do like five or six different customs. If you have really picky headphones or IMs, and you're like, I really like these headphones, but the treble kills me, so I want to tr trim it down. Then you could have multiple, but on this, you get one custom, and it's what, a 10 band? So you get 10 band from 31.5 31. to 16K. I'm going to turn that off or reset it. That's basically it for the EQ. It's not like a parametric. It's not It's not going to quidelix you. Or, uh, no, wait, what was the one that did the... Um, wasn't it Qdelix? Which is the one with the app? That was like the biggest fucking thing for the longest time. Is it the Qdelix? Eh, my brain is failing. It doesn't matter. But the one where you could actually do parametric EQs, and that was like amazing. Then the audio section, here's where it's a little bit more... I gotta clean this fucking phone screen on my shirt like a real person. You can limit the volume. Good if you have super sensitive IMs. You don't need to ever get to 60. Just... Drop that down. If you're going to use one thing with it, do it. You can change the Bluetooth volume, which don't know what... I think that means the Bluetooth connection volume because then there's a volume in calls. Then there's a channel balance you could adjust. You can boost balance out mode off. Uh, recommended for low sensitivity headphones with boost mode increased noise floor and consumption. Ooh! Let's boost to these, even though these were playing on high mode already. So let's see what that means. Oh, that was for using IMs. Okay, distortion compensation. You can actually do, if you hit the question mark, it's nice, because look, I don't know what this does, question mark. When using distortion compensation, the compensation level will affect the harmonic component, which corresponds to the output audio performance. You may adjust the level according to your personal preference, confirm. So if you turn this on, you could set the second and third harmonic compensations. I don't want to start getting into that. This video is already like 30 minutes long. Let's just assume if you put it on, to fix something, it'll sound worse, and you gotta fix it again with harmonic compensations. And then you have the clock divider level, which uh, increasing the clock divider level can improve sound quality, but brings more power consumption. It is recommended uh, to set it to a one quarter level for Bluetooth input and one for DAC. Well, I'm a psychopath. I'm gonna set it to one for Bluetooth input, and I'm putting on the balance boost. So now we are, we're good, and we're forced LDAC. So I'm gonna close that app. We're going to go here again with this thing. So let's see. Do I notice a difference now that it's forced LDAC? And what's our... Oh, did it lower our volume? I'm imagining it would lower our volume. It did. It lowered it to 50%. So as soon as you put on that boost mode, it's like, all right, we're going to give you less volume. So now I can hold it to raise the volume. Which the thing about noise floor is you have something sensitive, yes, you'll be able to tell if it's... Holy fucks, that's loud at 49. Well, all right, now T60 Argons are like... Something just broke? Music literally stopped, and it's still playing here. Next track? 
Holy fuck loud. Holy fuck loud. Oh, see, I'm, I'm used to the tap, tap, tap. So I just double tapped it like six times and it changed tracks. So now I got to get used to holding it. Wow. Okay. Um, putting on that like hidden high gain. I guess I should have done a whole. I'm going to talk about that because that's. Whoa. We're... These are cooking now. Okay. There's a hidden high gain that. um. Now we're getting to the point where it's like, okay, desktop audio. So whatever the points were in my head, like if I have this like an 88 out of 100, now it's a 94 out of 100. Because if you have absolutely ridiculous headphones that should not be taken out and they're hard to drive, you can go into the app and tell it to give me more noise for it. So I wonder what, all right, so hold on. Oh, I'm going to lower this down. I'll plug those back in my, my head for a second. Because if it says the noise floor goes higher, I want to know. Because we're on high gain. LDAC, I'm pretty sure the app DEXs have caught up to LDAC, so I don't think I'm going to hear an absolute difference in that, although I am an LDAC fanboy, and I'll probably leave that on. Let me just see, without dying, which is, this is dangerous now, 100%, because anything might accidentally next track, or... All right, I'm going to hold the volume, preparing to yank this out in case it decides to play for some reason. I heard a slight pop at 40. I still don't hear a noise floor. It may not activate. What I need to do is, and this is a thing, digital devices like this, modern devices, will actually have the amplifiers on unless something is playing. So I have to go. I think I have them downloaded. I have like a one hour block of silence. So it's just a waveform with nothing in it. And you play that, and then it kicks everything on, and then you can assess noise floor. It's easy to assess noise floor on a desktop amp, because it's just a big dumb amp. This, hard to assess noise floor, but when nothing's playing, there is no noise floor. That's a feature. Literally, those headphones, the Zeus and those, and whatever the hell else I plugged into this over the other, have never needed high gain, just high gain. So now, take high gain, give it an even higher fucking gain, like a significantly, lo like 30% more. And does that, wait, does that mean that the power ratings is for high gain with this limiter off? Because now it's insane. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna end this review soon because it's, it's we're getting on in time and you can't buy it anyway. You're wa if you're a patron, you certainly can't buy it. Maybe I'll leave this hidden until it actually pops out on the internet at late August, so like a month away. Oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this on there and listen to some Rodrigo and Gabrielle. Well, okay, yeah. How does it sound, Zeus? Because everyone's like, Zeus, you didn't talk about how it sounds. It sounds now with the with the boost. Because if if you're concerned with it on big headphones, which most people aren't, with the boost, it sounds like I'm using a desktop amp. I have no idea how long the battery is gonna last now. I'd have to give this a full like three days of like just burn it. But it sounds like a desktop amp, like a modern Fio good one. They really work that THX shit out, man. It sounds glorious. It's just, it's a clean, not, it's linear, but not boring. It has no distortion. I, it's not like I'm plugged it into a topping LA90, but it's, it's at least as good as everything Fios have made. And it, it, it is worthy of the BTR label. If you're gonna go from the five to something, that's the unit. I just want to keep listening to, to Alan Silvestri's Roger Rabbit soundtrack in Flack over LDAC, over high gain boosted. Beautiful. Now I'm going to put it back in this ugly ass case. I don't know if I have a waifu sticker. I, you know what? A company said they were going to send me a laser engraver. And I'm like, hell yeah. So I'll just put this on there and I'll just boom. Girl from Girl in Panzer with the choker, boom, right there. Just laser engrave her on there with the glasses and everything. Um, if you can buy this, congratulations. Links are in the description. If you can't buy this, enjoy your weight. And then you're probably going to want to buy this. You could plug in my Z12 IMs to it. Or any good IMs. Because I, I, they're just another IM in the pile of millions of IMs that I already love. Those just happen to have my name on them. Um, links to this. 
I'll link to this adapter, Zeos, link to this adapter, because I feel like a lot of psychopaths, this is what it's gonna look like. They're just gonna rubber band this around there, and it's gonna be like, yeah, look at my portable fucking headphone amp. It's good enough for that. It's good enough. On that high gain setting, we're, we're killing it with Argons. Um, Patreon and subscribe stars, see your reviews early. Participate in yard sales. I believe this is coming out, at least for patrons, high patrons. August has that big mega yard sale, but every month from the 1st to the 10th, I sell a bunch of stuff. Like, I would sell some of these, but these are like the, the defining products that I want to be able to pull out in videos like this to say, well, here's a size comparison, and here's a knob comparison. And this one is what you get if you want to go full tits. Like, I sold the Balanced X-Duo because this exists. I don't need the Balanced X-Duo and this. This is better, more features, more options, slicker. It just is. So I need some of these things to rip them out and compare. But um, yard sales happen from the 1st to 10th of every month and I ship free Canada and US and half shipping for the rest of the world, no matter where you live. So if you're a patron of mine, you can bid on anything and I'll ship it almost anywhere. I don't know if I could ship to like Russia right now, just saying that. I don't know if I physically can. Um, or, or if I ship it to Ukraine, like, is it just going to get run over by something? Like, a tank's going to run it over. It's like, oh, shit, they ran it over again. How's everybody doing over there? Um, yard sales. Oh, sound demos. Lost of sound demos in the Sound Demo Oasis. And then for $10 a month, you get in the behind-the-scenes private Telegram chat where you, you can discuss shit directly with me, with other people there. And if you're in that, you're in a lifetime swap meet. So if you don't like something or you want something else, you go to the swap meet, you ask people for it, you buy, you sell, you trade. And you're in that for life. There's like 330 members. It's a very private little swap meet community. That wallpaper, I will do the, it's not the full amateur link, there's just the code, but also the wallpaper hoard from Resilio Sync with every wallpaper I've ever used ever. If you want every wallpaper I've ever used ever, get the hoard to work. If you can't get the hoard to work, I can't help you because it's just, it's something every client has to work with. Anyway, I'm done. Thank you to Fio for sending me out a broken BTR7, which then firmware fixed. And now that I'm digging through the options and I figured out that I can put on that super duper, because I hadn't tried these before and I haven't needed more power. So this is a good time to discover it. And I'm sure this will pop up now and then in the future comparisons. And I'll still be like, hey, is this thing better than this? Probably not. Cool, 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 cool. See you in two days. Sorted.